Rocky Mountain Sasquatch Organization. Here's one of the springs that I keep an eye on up on top of Monte Cristo. Bigfoot sighting hot spot. There's seven Bigfoot sightings that have been reported directly to me over the years. Most of them were before I got serious about Bigfooting. You know, uh, brother-in-law, father-in-law, my aunt's boyfriend. Latest Bigfoot sighting reported to me. The guy was on a hunting fishing Facebook page. It's a quite big one. And he says, I really don't know who to talk to this about, so maybe this is a good place to start. You know, he's not a Bigfoot in enthusiast to the point that he follows these types of channels. He does now because I jumped in on the conversation and told him, you know, who I am and what I do after I saw, you know, about a half a dozen of them sitting there talking about their Bigfoot sightings. And uh, I asked the guy for the details of his Bigfoot sighting. And uh, he started right away, you know, when he uh, emailed me that it happened up on Monte Cristo. And I was like, wow, you know. Um, so this wasn't a guy that, that follows the station, you know, our channel or anything. So anyway, uh, it was about two in the morning, not too far from here, uh, probably maybe three miles from where I'm standing now. Uh, it was about two in the morning. They were driving a car in a clearing off to the side of the road is where they saw the Bigfoot. And he says it was dark, maybe black. Good eight feet tall, eight and a half feet tall is what he estimated. He was in the car with his girlfriend, maybe his wife now. The headlights hit it in the clearing. It looked at them like it wasn't happy to see them or happy that the lights were on it before it headed off into the woods. And anyway, his conversation, he started on this hunting and fishing channel. There was about eight other people that had come forward saying that they'd saw Bigfoot, you know, and there was a lot of people in on the conversation you know, I asked everybody to, you know, give me their reports, more detail, you know, on that thread. But he's the only one, the one that started up this conversation that let me know. But most of the people on this hunting fishing channel are from this area, from the Utah area. So most of the sighting reports were from Utah. There was also a couple from Idaho. This is an area I keep an eye on and I just get excited. It helps me stay motivated when... Uh, you know, people in the areas that I'm going into, you know, come forward with these Bigfoot sightings. So, you know, that's his Bigfoot sighting report. I am um, excited to come up here, and it's probably the last time I'll be able to get in here um, this year. So it'll probably be spring before I can come back. So I'm going to do an SD card exchange on some of my cameras and make sure the batteries are good to go all cold winter long. So keep on watching. We're going to keep on squatching. I'll keep bringing you more Bigfoot sighting reports and our Bigfoot expeditions where we actually go into these places. People say they see Bigfoot and we do our investigations and look around to see if we can find Bigfoot evidence our own and maybe get lucky and one day get a sighting in the open brain. Oh, I just heard a vocalization off that direction. I don't know if the camera got it. No, this could have been anything. I don't know what it is. That direction. I heard some type of vocalization. Very well could have been a bird or something. I'm gonna hike around. Check up on those cameras. And of course, if there's anything on those cameras, I will put them on our Rocky Mountain Sasquatch Organization Bigfoot channel.
Keep on watching, we're gonna keep on squatching. I'm the only one on this mountain today. And uh, the reason I know this is because I had to move a tree out of my way. You know, so. I suspect that I might be one of the few people to come up here after us, after it snowed. So, yep. Maybe the last time I can come up here until uh, July. Because when it dumps snow up here, it dumps snow. It's, uh, we're at about 9,500 feet elevation. I believe the tree that I set this other camera up on has been ripped over. There's a snap off right there. Camera's missing. And the tree has just been smashed over. Not saying Bigfoot ripped my camera off of here and broke these two trees but my camera's gone and the trees are smashed and it's been two months since I've been here so really unfortunate to lose a camera but if it was just a uh, if it was just missing off the tree, I'd be like, oh, somebody took my camera, but the trees have been, they've been broke. Weird. All right, well, there's other cameras in the area to check and just don't know what to tell you guys camera's gone and the trees that it was on and the next one to it have been snapped you know I'd blame the snap on the weather if my camera was still there to show that the weather did it but I secure these cameras really well makes me wonder if it was yanking on the camera to break it I'm going to look around and see if I can find that camera on the ground or whatever. And This is weird. Really weird. Well, I hope you guys enjoy uh, what's on those SD cards. I'll put them at the end of this video. It's, uh, it's funny, I always say it's like... Uh, it's always like Christmas morning whenever you pick up some uh, SD cards in search of the Yeti show that's been on. Casey Anderson says the same thing when he grabs his cameras. He makes the statement that uh, it's just like Christmas. I thought that was funny, you know. All right, well, it's a Bigfoot sighting hotspot, and uh, I'm going to take a look around. I, haven't seen any elk or deer prints. I've seen rabbit. Nah, nothing Bigfooty so far. Just some weird snapped over trees. Keep on watching. We're going to keep on squatching. <laughs>